Country goes down to eight to five. Another horse getting lots of money, the Kirk McLean horse, Regal Discovery at six to one over to Ice Agent, who we were just talking about there at ten to one. And of course, Langfear holding steady at five to two. He's one of the horses that the people universally like. Well, it's a betters race, a 14-horse field here this afternoon. As we look at the walking ring, the horses will be out there in just a minute. All firmed up is horse number two from Frank Stronach. And Jim, let's talk about the winner of the play trial. He's an interesting horse, Brian. He likes hard racing. When horses come out of tough races, they usually fall by the wayside. But in the plate trial, he loved this. He's gritty. He just loves to stick his nose in it. He was a $145,000 purchase. He had a flaw when he was bought. He had a lesion on his leg. Stronach was going to give him back, but thought better of it and kept him. And by keeping him, he's got the favorite for the plate. Well, his stable mates today, Ride, Freedom Ride Fleet and, and Honky Tonk Tune. Honky Tonk Tune is horse 2Y. We'll get a look at him in just a minute. Four is Regal Discovery. That's Kirk McLean's horse. Number nine is Stanley Silver. Let me bring in uh, Dan Kenny. Talk to me about the Philly Honky Tonk Tune. But first, let's look at Freedom Fleet, horse 2B, the other part of that Stronach entry. This is a horse that really fills the eye, Brian. He's much bigger, has much more scope than a fleet. So as uh, Mike Doyle said, his pattern of running is conducive to a mile and a quarter, and he certainly looks the part. If a horse is long, his stride will be longer and more efficient, and uh, this horse makes a very fine appearance. Well, There's the other part of the entry is the Philly Honky Tonk Tune, written by the classy Sandy Holly. Well, he is classy. He's a great ambassador for racing. For you know, Brian, this horse was able to beat the boys last year in the Victoria Stakes because she had speed, and she won the achievement this year, and because she had speed, she kept the boys behind her. But this is a different game. It's a route race, and when you go long, you just can't use your speed to win. You've got to use determination, and you've got to use some stamina. One thing I like about her is I notice she's been running on top of the ground lately instead of flat-footed. And I like the fact that when she got shut off as she did in the Canadian Oaks, she got right back in the race again. And you can see the hordes of people down there just ringing the uh, paddock. And looking at these horses, getting a final glimpse just to see who their favorite will be as they make their way out. Well, the last filly to win was Dan Smartly. Dan Kenny, here's Mount Sassafras, a late runner, third in the trial. A lot of interest in this horse this afternoon. The plate trial, like he means business today, he's got the nice length and scope as well. His sire was a sprinter, Mount Livermore, but he carries a lot of stamina. The dam is by Sassafras. Sassafras, of course, upset the great Nijinsky, the first horse to beat Nijinsky in the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And here is horse number four, Jim Bannon. This is Regal Discovery, Kirk McLean, the Vancouver goaltender involved here, and he's getting a lot of attention. I'm a little surprised. If you look under the tree there as the horse goes by, you'll see Kirk standing right there. He looks like Superman. And this is a great horse, and he got shut off badly in the trial, still came on. He's, he's using Lasix. Dan Kenny, what about Ice Agent? That's the uh, horse with a hockey connection. Here's a pedigree. No doubt a mile and a quarter is within this horse's scope. He's inexperienced, but he's by Miss Walkie, the sire of Urban Sea, who won the Arc de Triomphe at a mile and a half. Miss Walkie, the sire of a Breeders' Cup champion in Black Tie Affair, and the sire of a winner of the Japan Cup. He's out of an alleged mare. He can run all day, and I think he's a sleeper in the race. Well, as this field of 14 makes its way out onto the main track, let's once again update the odds. 8-5 to five on the Stronic entry. They're the favorite. The second choice uh, is uh, Langfure at 5-2. to two. And Mount Sassafras, they continue to get money at 3-1. to one. A lot of the other long shots, Brian, when you have a horse that's 8-5, to five, as the Stronach entry is, you'll see here that some of these horses, Disciple 50-1, to one, Stanley Silver, a somewhat eccentric horse, uh, he's big odds, as is Prince of the North, the only maiden in the race. You know, it's interesting, no female trainer has ever won the Queen's Plate. Janet Bedford was second with Let's Go Blue in 1984. Three female trainers today, Kathy Ranford, Suzanne Lorimer, and Barb Minchel. Right now, let's have a close closer look at the Minchel operation. Barbara Minchel is a one-time Olympic dressage team member who's been very successful in her first year as a trainer. Her two Queen's Plate horses are a legacy of her late husband Aubrey's years of pedigree study. It's good. It uh, just proves that we were on the right breeding program and Aubrey was on the right breeding program for a long time and it just sort of came together this year and uh, we've been breeding for this moment for a long time. Mount Sassafras looks strong at the finish when third in the trial, but are his nerves steady enough for the big race itself? He's uh, a good-natured horse. He's quite aggressive uh, with other horses. Um, he's easy to train. Uh, he likes to train every day, and he's uh, basically a very um, willing kind of horse. He gets a little
little nervous in the post parade, but it's mainly just his anxious to get going. I don't think it'll, the crowds will affect him, and I think he'll run well. Kiradashi earned his chance with a good third in a prep race just seven days ago. The bold ruckus colt has speed that will get the acid test today at 10 furlongs. Kiradashi's run some, some really good races. He's been third with Smart Strike and all firmed up, and uh, Tethra, and he's, he's, he's been in there with all the tough ones. Um, he's a very game horse. He's um, has a lot of speed, and he's, but he's very rateable, and um, I expect him to run a good race. Um, I think his, the Victoria Park race last week at a mile and an eighth, um, he was coming on, and I thought maybe he was moved on a little too early to um, show his true ability to go that distance. I think he's going to get the distance. Distance. Again with the horse that is really here for speed. And he's a pretty good developing horse. It's Kira Dash. He's a first-time Lasix user. That should help him. He's got Larry Attard aboard, who did win when uh, Bompago in 83. Mount Sassafras, a late-running third in the trial. About a month ago, he ran a race in 143 and change, and that was excellent because older horses ran faster, you know, on a regular basis, but not that day. And when a three-year-old can go quicker, you want to watch him. Here's the trial winner. 22 trial winners have gone on to win the Queen's Plate. He was very gritty in that race, and he's going to be gritty again today. I think Sellers has already had a great day winning twice for Stronach. Hey, here's a strange horse. He can be wild. <laughs> <laughs> he dumps his jockey. He does everything. He runs up, but boy, has he got talent. Well, here is the lone filly, and I'll use that description again, ridden by the classy Sandy Hawley. She's fast, for, and watch her when the gates open, Brian. She'll be sprinting to the lead on the outside. Interesting to see how far she goes. Freedom Fleet was strange. There's a different way to describe this horse. Oh, he is nasty. Boy, you don't want to be around him in the morning before he's had his coffee, Brian, because he gets mighty nasty. When he gets on the racetrack, he's nasty, too, to the others. Regal Discovery had some trouble early in the trial. He was squeezed back, and he showed a great deal of recovery to come on and run so well, and the extra distance will be beautiful. Well, this horse owned by the owners of the Baker's Dozen Donuts, it should be number 13. <laughs> <laughs> He's mighty fast, Brian. You know that Platts is going to put him right on the lead with Honky Tonk Tune. Here's Ice Agent, named for Super Agent Don Meehan. Well, let's hope he has the same agility as all the hockey players uh, for which he competes this day. Uh, he'll get the distance for sure. Here is one of the late entrants, and I would say hope is maybe the important word there you see on the screen. He's a beautiful looking horse, Brian. It seems this is the best I've ever seen him right here. He's up on his toes and looking well. He's by Risen Star, who could run a mile and a half. Here's the horse that ran so well, second in the trial. When you see horses day in and day out, as I do here for about 25 years at Woodbine, and one of these horses comes in your path, you look at Langfear and say, that is a special horse. Here's a horse that loves to eat Joe Louis chocolates and Gatorade. Well, let's hope he's all beefed up and ready to go, and uh, there won't be any stopping at the quarter pole for a fill-up. Here's a good-looking horse that's probably not at home on this surface. Carries the Your Majesty line. That was go for gin a couple of years ago in the uh, Kentucky Derby through that one's son, Cormorant. This horse is probably better on the grass, but he's a great-looking horse, if you noticed. And yet to win a maiden, the last maiden to win the plate, Golden Choice. This is the second chicken dance representative in the field. This is for Bruno, the nephew of Gustav. He campaigns the very good horse, uh, Scott Zanna, who won in New York the other day. This horse is up against it. Roger Atfield trying to win the plate this afternoon for the seventh time. He's got Pete's sake, or for Pete's sake, a long shot. Regal Discovery, not a bad horse. Remember, he won with market control a long shot many years ago. Regal Discovery is the kind of horse that will get the mile and a quarter. And um, I believe there are a few horses in this race that won't get the mile and a quarter. So I think if we, if the way he worked this morning, if he uh, gets the right kind of trip, he could um, be showing up late in, the, in this race going a mile and a quarter. He's a very uncomplicated horse to train. Um, he gets a little bit uh, anxious in the paddock, or has done his last two or three starts. His last start, actually, I had him a lot better. He had two starts where he was... Um, he was uh, very much on edge and he got kind of washy there and uh, we've been working on that. He, he acted very well at the barbecue yesterday, I thought. Um, very uncomplicated horse as far as training him in the morning is concerned. And I think if I can just get him over there in the afternoon that he's settled enough in the saddling procedure and in the, um, and in the warm up procedure, uh, I believe he's going to run a good race. For Pete's sake, he's kind of a... He's kind of his own uh, own man. He's got a will of his own. He's um, he's uh, he can get a little rammy and silly over there too. Um, 
he will get he will get schooled every day this week going going into this thing. Um, a lot will depend on how he handles the whole situation too, and he's got to he's got to learn to be able to rate and, and relax early on in the race, or, or you know there won't be anything le left to the late part of the race. But I'm really I'm going to learn something from that too, because like I say, he's so lightly raced. I really you know he's still a very inexperienced horse. Well, we talked about the lack of big-name horses, big-name American jockeys here. Gary Stevens won the Kentucky Derby in the Belmont with Thunder Gulch. And a few hours ago, earlier this afternoon, Dan Kenny sat down with Stevens. Jockey Gary Stevens is the hottest rider in the world this year, winning major races in Hong Kong and California, winning the Kentucky Derby in the Belmont with Thunder Gulch. Gary, you've never ridden a Queen's Plate. Why here today with Langfjord? Well, I received a call last week uh, from the owners of this horse, and it seemed a good opportunity. I've never ridden in the plate before, as you said. It's a race that I've dreamed about riding in and also winning. This uh, serves as a good opportunity for me. Now, obviously, you don't need a lot of familiarity because you have ridden good winners all over the world. But is it difficult for you to come in cold and ride a horse that you've never sat on before? Well, fortunately for me this year, some of my biggest wins have been on horses that I've never ridden before. Uh, Larry the Legend, the Santa Anita Derby, uh, quest for, uh, uh, urgent request in the Santa Anita Handicap, and then Thunder Gulch in the Derby. I hadn't ridden him for five months, so as long as I study tapes and know the horse's racing form and what the trainer expects of me, then it makes my job pretty simple if the horse has got talent, and he's definitely got talent. Well, then off the tape, what have you seen? And perhaps give us a hint of what strategy you might use. Well, he's a colt that's got good natural speed. He's uh, bred very royally. And uh, I think it's just a matter of uh, getting the right trip, conserving as much as I can, and, and watching to see how the race sets up in front of me or behind me, knowing what's going on at all times, and just pretty much knowing how much horse I've got underneath me and uh, just rationing that speed as best I can throughout the race. Well, Gary, best of luck. Welcome to Woodbine, and uh, who knows, we'll probably see Gary next in that new $4 million race in Dubai, and don't be surprised if he wins it. All right, Dan Kenny, Langfear, one of the outstanding-looking horses in the field. An outstanding place to be, one of the most popular places. These are the hospitality tents, right turf side at Woodbine. Thunder Gulch, when he won the Derby this year, came from post 16. It's always good for positioning to be on the outside, particularly with that long run to the first turn. It's a quarter mile and then a little bit, and that should give everybody a chance to position. Firmed up, Freedom Fleet and Honky Tonk Tune. I think class must tell, Brian, and now six to five down there for these favorites, and uh, some of the others had to go up, but look at Langfjord, took a big hit at the end down to two to one. That's good considering there's another couple of horses in the race that are taking big money. He's sharing in most of the money bet here today. Dan Loisel standing by to call the race. Let me ask you, as we look to those post positions uh, before going up to uh, Dan Loisel, uh, Jim, the good horses on the outside, can we expect a rough race this afternoon? Because we've seen some rough races coming in here, namely the Oaks and the trial. The Oaks was very, very difficult, and the trial was tough, too. There was a lot of bumping through the stretch, and with 14 horses, something's likely to happen. And Roger Atfield with a couple of horses here today. Danny Vela has several horses. Both are hurting. Their father's passing away recently. As we look down, they're just about ready to go. It's a 14-horse field. Dan Loisel, you all ready? All set, Brian. You know, you wonder if it's in the cards for owner Frank Stronach and trainer Dan Vela to win the back-to-back -back Queen's Plates. They certainly have a powerful hand, a pair of aces in the form of all firmed up. And Freedom Fleet and a queen in the hole in the form of Honky Tonk Tune. And any one of them could certainly take the pot and the public have nailed them down to six to five. Just waiting on two horses. The last horse to load will be Prince of North. Prince of North uh, just about ready to load and will be on the way in the Queen's Plate. They're at the post. Uh, they're off in the Queen's Plate Stakes. Disciple pinched back at the start. Set out for the early lead is Kitadashi. To the inside, Desert Falcons coming on as well. And on the outside, all firmed up as they move in front of us for the first time. Desert Falcons closest to the rail, along with, for Pete's sake, Wang Fuhr. Gary Stevens sends him to the front now as they move onto the wire for the first time. Kitadashi's to the inside of Wang Fuhr. The first quarter was in 23 seconds. Kitadashi on the inside and Wang Fuhr on the outside. For Pete's sake, drafts in behind them in third. Desert Falcon is fourth. The Gray all firmed up, out of trouble on the outside, fifth. Ice Agent is sixth, back about seven lengths off the lead. Then we have Mount Sassafras, who is currently in seventh position. Regal Discovery is eighth. 
Stanley Silver is 9th, the Philly Honky Tonk Tune is 10th, Freedom Fleet is 11th, Disciple is 12th, Prince of North is 13th, and Your Majestic is 14th. A headstrong Langfear on the front end leads it by an act to Kitadashi. They're being stalked to the outside by all firmed up. Shane Sellers has him coiled as they run toward the far turn. For Pete's sake is a close fourth. Regal Discovery is fifth. Honky Tonk Tune is sixth. Freedom Fleet is back ten lengths off the lead. Called on for his run by Mike Smith with three furlongs to go in the Queen's Plate. And Kitadashi came and determined on the inside. Langfear is coming back. All firmed up is ready to make his move as they come to the quarter pole. And Freedom Fleet is picking them off one by one with a dramatic charge toward the leaders as they come to the top of the stretch of Woodbine. And Freedom Fleet is out. Absolutely flying on the outside, and he comes on to take the lead. It's Freedom Fleet with the lead. Langfuhr, all framed up. Kitadashi, Regal Discovery is gaining ground on the inside, but they are struggling to keep up with Freedom Fleet. Regal Discovery's gaining ground now. Regal Discovery, an upset in the making. Regal Discovery wins the Queen's play to Freedom Fleet. Mount Sassafras was third. Well, Brian and Jim, Regal Discovery come flying up the fence. Todd Cable, the rider, 203 and 4. How ironic is that? Todd Cable wins his first Queen's Plate. And I'll tell you what, Dan Lewisell, it's ironic because Cable has written both All Firmed Up and Freedom Fleet for Frank Stradick. Stradick brought in the big name American jockeys and it was Todd Cable with Regal Discovery, the number one stable. Kirk McLean, the goaltender of the Vancouver Canucks. His wife's family actually owns the horse. Kirk now involved. What a day for Todd Cable. What a day exactly. And of course, this is a race that the sire of this horse couldn't win. Regal Classic, he was second in the race. But it sure looked like Freedom Fleet had the race all wrapped up the way he moved. But you could see Cable is so excited. Several things happened here. The number two horse bumped into Disciple in the middle of your screen. And the other thing that I noticed, Honky Tonk Toon did not get away well. In fact, wasn't near the front at any point. As they come through the stretch the first time, I noticed also that Mount Sassafras, by the time they started, had got quite shook up. He's the horse with the nose band just in behind the horse in the red in the middle of your screen. Langfear running up near the lead with Stevens. Uh, it's my opinion this is a come from behind horse. It'll be interesting to see later on in his career if they can get him to do that. As they came around the far turn, all firmed up three wide on the outside in the blue, was ready to spring, and Langfear could not contain him. But on the outside in the white cap with the blue, here comes what looks like the winner, Freedom Fleet. But watch Brian in the orange and the blue on the fence. Coming up the rail, here's Regal Discovery. I could see him at the top of the stretch that if he got through, he meant business. Right now, he's still fifth, about a furlong to go. It looks like this race is all over, and Freedom Fleet is long gone. But coming up the fence with ever-reaching stride is Regal Discovery, the son of Regal Classic, and here's Cable getting into him. You know he wanted to have the last laugh this day, and when he got to the wire, there was an explosion of emotion as he stood up in the saddle and waved his whip. Todd Cable upstaging the big-name American immigrants. Here it is head-on at the finish. And look to the right of your screen now. You don't see him yet because this is still Freedom Fleet. He's looked like he's got it wrapped up. But right over to the rail, you'll see him coming in here in the orange and blue is Todd Cable. And here he is coming back. What a great relief this is for Todd Cable. The number one stable is owned by Leslie Ann McLean and her parents, Ann and Ron Shattuck. Kirk McLean, her husband, of course, as I mentioned, the goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, his sweater is number one, and thus the name number one stable. Regal Discovery, and we talked about Regal Discovery just as the horses were loading. He was pinched in the trial. Explain that for the viewers, and it happened early on. Happened because he got just in tight quarters and had to pull back. Very quickly, let's go down to Dan Kenny. Thanks, Brian. And horse racing is nothing but the game of never give up, Roger, I'm sure. Talking man's injury had to be a devastating disappointment, and you turn around with a horse that nobody thinks is going to win, and you add another Queen's play. You look like you're pretty excited. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, you know, we went in here with uh, just a slim chance, you know, and uh, we sort of got messed up with this horse um, a little bit um, in the middle of um, coming back from, from uh, Kentucky, and I thought that the trial was a positive race for him, and 
he trained so well for me since that time and uh, we'd scored him all week and had him pretty settled and I saw him a little washy in the in the post parade worried me a little bit but I thought that you know if he got to run his race and um, there was a legitimate pace in this race that he was going to be tough but uh, you know it was a tough task and we got it done anyway so well sometimes seven, seven ski now okay seven <laughs> queen's plates and uh, very sweet unexpected when there's another excited fellow just uh, around the corner with Terry Leibold Todd Cable, what a stretch drive we, Regal Discovery gave you. Uh, he was tremendous. I was just sitting with a lot of horse waiting for a hole to open, and finally it did, and he shot through there just like a gun. And there you were, eye to eye with Freedom Fleet. Did you think you had him? Well, I know Freedom Fleet, and he gets late if he makes a lead too early, and I could see him starting to pull himself up, and I knew my horse was in full stride. Well, a masterful job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Brian? Well, it was quite a race here this afternoon. Regal Discovery, owned by the number one stable, winning the 1995 Queen's Plate. Frank Stradick's Freedom Fleet, and then Mount Sassafras, owned and trained by Barbara Minshew, the exactor four and two, and it's a good one, paying $59.20. Hang on, folks, we'll return. Lots more to come. Listen to the ovation for Cable. Excuse me, how many ways could you eat right? Horse field, let's run it down because a lot of people wondering, well, there's all, all firmed up in the number five position. Yes, and of course, you look at the time, 2.03 and 4, which isn't that bad. I mean, Ali Deed went in 2.04 and 3, and Pietzky went in 2.04 and 1, Basky in last year, 2.03 and 2, so that stands up pretty well. Mount Sassafras was closing late. He'll be one to watch. Freedom Fleet, I'm sure if he had been ridden a little different, it may have been a different result. All firmed up, was poised, couldn't strike. Some of the other ones, I was disappointed in the run by Ice Agent, as much for the horse as its connections. This horse still has a bit of a future. Desert Falcon, the horse that was claimed for 16000 out of the money. Honky Tonk 2 never did get to run up on the pace. She didn't get to run her race. Let's throw this race out, Brian. All right, and right now, let's throw it down very quickly to Terry Libel. Terry? Thank you very much, Brian. Well, has it set in yet, Leslie, that your horse won the plate? I don't think so, not really. It's just, it's so exciting. We're so happy. It just, what a better day to do it than today. It's perfect. Kirk McLean, you're hiding back there. Let me get a, Let me get your thoughts. You looked at the horse. I saw you looking him over pretty carefully in the paddock. Your thoughts? Well, he looked pretty calm in the paddock, and that's something that we, we needed out of him, but he just came out and, and ran a strong race, and I'm just happy for these three people right here. It's, it, they're the backbone to the whole thing. Outstanding <laughs> common, and yes, Leslie, you've been in horses all your life. The Shattuck's, congratulations to you. You've got a Queen's Plate winner. Thank you. Thank you. Brian? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize well, we're running out of time. Terry, here. all roads lead to the Prince of Wales, of course, and I noted the pedigree on the bottom, Tom Rolfe, a great grass influence, so we might see this horse be very powerful in the Prince of Wales, but these are evenly matched three-year-olds. Closing words, as I see Roger in his morning suit, I spent a lot of time with him during the Triple Crown. One of the great facts I learned, Roger used to be a musician, played the ukulele in a skiffle band in England. He's come a long way. I'll tell you, the way you snuck up on me was the way that Regal Discovery snuck away with this Queen's Plate, an outstanding effort. Looking forward to the second leg. Brian? All right, very quickly, Jim Bannon, a word on pedigree, so very important here today. Well, this horse carries a lot of the Vice Regent Northern Dancer blood, and I think that's very important to say because Vice Regent just passed away lately, and it just shows you how long in the tooth this, you know, Canadian pedigree is getting. Uh, Northern Dancer and, of course, his sire, Neartic, have horses all over the world that win the best races, and it started right here, and it is celebrated right here. Well, I tell you, it was a good race here this afternoon. Frank Stronach stopped in a bid to make it two in a row. Yes, and of course, he'll be back. He's got great horses, and I think some of these horses that he has, particularly all firmed up, will like the grass later on, and we should have a lot of these back for the Prince of Wales. That should be great, and then on to the Molson, of course, after we have the last leg in the Breeders, should be great. Well, Leslie Ann McLean and her mother are celebrating just a reminder. The Beacon course elimination.